Welcome to this video in the LAMP stack tutorial series where we'll start to write some PHP code. Instead of building this website from scratch, I'll be using the application that I created in the Bootstrap demo at the end of my Bootstrap playlist. As a review, this obviously has a home page. It has a registration page with Bootstrap form validation, a login page, which also has validation, and a contacts page, which displays a list of contacts. Now, as we know, since this is a simple static HTML file, I could drag it and drop it into my browser and the page will load. However, as previously mentioned, PHP files need to be pre-processed by the web server before sending the content to the browser to be displayed. In fact, to demo this, to convert the index.html file to a PHP page, I simply change the HTML extension to PHP and save the page. Now if we go back to the browser and I try and load index.html, it doesn't exist anymore because I renamed the file. If I change the HTML extension to PHP and try and load it, I just see the HTML from the page. It's not sent to the browser in a manner that can be processed. We need to serve this page to the browser from a web server. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the files for this PHP demo from a regular folder on my file system to the folder that MAMP created for us when it installed Apache server. So in order to do that, I go back to my applications folder and click on the MAMP folder. Now we're not launching MAMP right now, we're just going to the folder that serves the web pages from the Apache HTTP server. And that is the folder called htdocs. So if I open the htdocs folder, we see there's one file in here, index.php. And that's the PHP page that we saw when we initially started MAMP after the installation. So inside the htdocs folder, I'll create a new folder and give it the name of my project. In this case, I'll just use demo. I'll open that up, take the files from the PHP folder and drop them into the demo. Now I'll click the MAMP icon to launch MAMP and then the start button to start the server. By default, we'll see the index.php page, which we saw in the htdocs folder, but we want to launch the site in the demo folder. So I'll go up to the URL and I'll change the address to be localhost colon 8888 that's the server localhost and the port that the server is running on slash demo is the path to the folder that has the index.php page for our site. If I hit enter, now we see the home page for our site. So now that we know how to convert the HTML files to PHP, let's go ahead and do that for the rest of the files. Go back to the browser. Let's see if we can load the pages. So here we're on the index.php. If I click the register link, we get a page not found. And that's because even though I changed the file extensions on the pages, I didn't update the code to point to the new files. They're still pointing to the old HTML files. So let's go back and go into each of the files and change the links in our pages to point to the new PHP files. And instead of changing all the links in the pages individually, I'm going to click on edit in VS Code, replace in files, and then I'm going to replace .html with .php. Click to replace all, and then go back to the browser. Go back to the home page and refresh. Click the register link, and we're taken to the register page. The login link, and we're taken to the login page. And if I enter values into the login form and click login, we're taken to the My Contacts page, and then we can log out. So now our website is built in PHP. Although we're really not getting much benefit out of using the PHP language and the web server. Now, you may recall at the beginning of this tutorial playlist, I mentioned that one of the things I wanted to do in showing you how to use PHP was to be able to include common code across multiple files in your site. For instance, what if we wanted to add an about menu item here that links to a new about PHP page on our website. The way our code is written now, the nav is written into each of the PHP pages. So in order to add a new link to an about page, I'd have to go into each of our web pages, each of the PHP files and add a new link item. And what if later we wanted to add another page to our navigation? Again, we'd have to go into each file in our website and change that code. Well, with using PHP includes, 
we could take code that's common across all pages in our site and put them in an external file, similar to what we do with our CSS and JavaScript, and then use a PHP include inside of our PHP pages to say, hey, go find this file and include it in this page before you send it down to the user's web browser. So let's take a look at how we can do that. I'll start out by going to the root folder of our demo project, and I'll create a new folder with the name INC for includes. And inside of that folder, I'll create a new file called head.php. And what I'll put in the head.php file is the contents of the head element in the web pages. So from index.php, I'll cut these elements and paste them into head.php. Save the file and we can close it. Now, in order to include that head.php into the head section of the index page, I'll use a PHP include which looks like this. And what this tells the processor to do is execute some PHP code. What I want you to do is include a file and the path to that file is in the INC folder and its name is head.php. So when I go to the browser and I make a request for the index page from the web server, this line will be processed and the head PHP file will be included before the page is sent down to the browser. So with this saved, we go back to the browser and I refresh the page, it looks exactly the same, which we would expect because we haven't changed any content on the page. We've only moved the contents of the HTML head into the file that we're including. And we know this is working because the head.php has the include for our CSS file. And if I right click and view page source up in the head, we see the elements that we put into the head PHP file. So what I need to do now is put this include in our other files. So we'll go to register and I'll replace the content in the head with the include. I'll do the same for the login and the contacts. Now, any changes that I need to make to the head section, perhaps we're going to include another one of our custom CSS files or another framework. If I make the change in the head PHP, all of these pages will pick up that change when the request from the browser is made to the server. As another example, let's do the same for the footer. So I'll create a new file in the INC folder. I'll name it footer.php. I'll go to the index page and cut the footer element from the page and paste it into the footer include. I'll save this, close the file, and then add an include for the footer. Save that page, do the same for the register, the login, and the contacts. Let's go back to the browser, refresh the page. We still have our footer, footer on the login page, the footer on the register page, and the footers on the contacts page. As an example, if we wanted to update the footer on all of our pages, we could just go into the footer, make a change and save it, go back to the browser, and now we see the change. Let's go back to the home page, and we see the change here too. So that's the benefit of using the PHP include files. It allows you to reuse code across multiple pages in your site, and it makes it easier to maintain. If you have to make a change to that include file to update all the pages, you just change the one file and all the pages that include it will inherit that change. So now we see the benefit of using include files for code reuse but we haven't yet seen the power of using a programming language like PHP. Now the include files that we have so far are great, but they really only work if the content that's included in the include file is the same on every page in the site. For instance, the footer. When you go from page to page, the footer is consistent. But what if we have content in an include file that changes based on the page that we're viewing in the browser? For instance, on the home page, the login page and the register page, we always display my contacts with a link back to the home page. There's always a link for login and there's always a link for register. But once you log in and you're taken to the contacts page, the navigation changes. Instead of seeing login and register, we now only see log out. And that's where the power of PHP being a programming language can help us out. So as I mentioned before, PHP is a programming language. It's a server scripting language. So PHP code executes on the server. The PHP include we have in our index.php page is executed on the server before the HTML is sent to the client. If we go back to the home page and we view the page source up in the head, we don't see this line of code with the PHP include. What we see in the HTML that's sent to the browser is the content of the head.php file. That's the server side scripting processing that happens on the web server. And in addition to 
simply including files, which is good practice for code reuse, we can dynamically display content on the page using the programming aspects of the language. And that's what we'll look at doing in the next video.